Home and school vegetable gardens have been with us forever and they get trotted out and encouraged and promoted, particularly at times of national stress like war, but they've been promoted more recently as an important source of solving malnutrition problems uh, and even solving some problems such as obesity. They've been given a lot of promotion, even at the highest levels. And I think because of their longevity and their popularity, there is a certain degree in which we can see these as uh, public goods, as, as uh, uh, something that is uh, almost uh, like a motherhood statement, something that is uh, an, an unassailable good, that of course these are good things. But uh, what I want to say is that we, when we see it in that way, we tend to reduce the opportunity to see home gardens as a specific product that can be easily and effectively scaled up. And I think that our friends at Coca-Cola and Ikea may have something to tell us about some of the ways in which we can improve and promote uh, home vegetable gardens. Now, I'd like to talk a little bit about some of the work that AVRDC has done in this area over the last uh, few years um, and uh, some of the successes, but more particularly some of the questions that our research work has, has raised and some of the opportunities that we see beyond this. Uh, Home vegetable gardens can be highly productive. Now, some work that we did over 30 years ago showed that uh, an 18 meter square area of uh, uh, vegetables, growing up to 50 vegetables uh, a, a year, could produce more than sufficient vitamin A, vitamin C, protein, and iron for a family of four. Now, the, the program that we've had in the last five years has used a, uh, a larger area, about six meters by six meters, in the areas of Jharkhand, a tribal area in, in India with very low nutrition and a very poor community, and in Punjab, a much richer and uh, rural community. Uh, using up to 27 different vegetables, we've found also that that sort of area can produce more than sufficient vitamin A and vitamin C and a fairly significant amount of protein and iron for a family of four. Now, it also diversifies diet. By putting out such a large number of vegetables, we've seen that uh, rural communities uh, have, have started to use up to six different vegetables that they weren't uh, familiar with before. So it does help to diversify diets. We've also seen that it can reduce expenditures. Uh, we find about five kilograms per week is being consumed in the home. Uh, some is sold, some is given away to, to friends and relatives but it has halved the expenditures of vegetables in the home and it tripled the consumption. <coughs> now, even in wealthier communities in Punjab, we've seen the same sort of thing happening, but not to the same degree. In this case here, the uh, area with no gardens, significantly lower uh, uh, consumption as compared to those that are, are actually got a garden. So even in a wealthy community, it's also made a major difference here to the amount of vitamin A and, and vitamin C consumed by the family. So they do work in terms of diversifying diets, in terms of increasing the number of uh, um, uh, vitamins and, and minerals that have been consumed. But they don't necessarily have to be a permanent fixture. We've been trying to promote uh, home gardens as a permanent thing, but they can also be used in a short-term way. And we've seen some very good successes here in promoting home vegetable gardens as a coping strategy in the few months after floods, <coughs> when communities can re-establish these gardens have something green and uh, nutritious, particularly for women and children, during a period when there's nothing much else to eat except perhaps rice provided by a, um, uh, an aid agency. Now the interventions that we had had four different components, but I think uh, one of the things that we found is that we've learned a lot from this process. Certainly the diverse nutrient supply was <coughs> useful, but do we need 27 different vegetables? After three or four years, we were able to reduce that down to about 16. Uh, that has to be both agronomically suitable, nutritionally suitable, culturally appropriate, and also appropriate as to what's available in the market. You don't want to duplicate what's already available cheaply in the market. So when you look at those four criteria, what's the minimum number of vegetables that we really need? We try to aim at year-round production through leafy vegetables. But do you need to do that? Sometimes growing things during the dry season is very difficult. It may be just as useful to grow gourds. It could be kept over that period. We provided quite a lot of training. It worked better in Punjab than it did in the tribal communities, uh, particularly for growing the crop worked very well. Not quite so good in terms of improving nutritional uh, awareness. Recipes also work better in richer communities than they did in poor communities, where most things tended to be either fried or boiled, even the lettuce. But I think it raises some more significant questions about what we're doing with home gardens. Home gardens are not little fields, but the trouble is that that's how we tend to see them. 
let me just show you. This is a typical home garden seed pack. This is the one produced by the public sector in India. About half a million of these have been distributed. But if you open up the packet, it contains three random packets of vegetables. Now, these are the same vegetable varieties that are grown in the open field. Now, in a home garden, you don't necessarily want the same things. You don't want tomatoes that spread out and all come on at once in a week. You'd much prefer to have something tall and thin that uses up only a minimal amount of space and that you can harvest for three months. But the trouble is we are not using the right varieties in our home gardens that are nutritionally appropriate. If this was a high vitamin A tomato that you could harvest over three months, it would be far more effective than using whatever happens to be available in the marketplace. The other thing is that we can see not just the, the crops, but the, the, the varieties, but also the crops can be very important. These are a range of indigenous vegetables that we've done research work on, and you can see here that in some cases amaranthus, moringa, far higher nutrition levels than cabbage and tomatoes. But we tend to think if it's a vegetable, it must be good for you. Other unknown vegetables, such as Ibica from the Pacific, highest levels of folate of any known vegetable that we've found so far. Very important for pregnant women. Could be much more important in, and useful in a home garden than growing whatever happens to be available in the marketplace. And we also need to think about space. When we see now that 30% of Indian rural families are essentially landless. They've even either no land at all or they've just got their land around their, their home available. So when we're looking at a home garden, a six metre by six metre area may be too small. Too, you know, it, it's just not available, that sort of space. So we need to think vertically as well as horizontally. How can we make best use of vertical spaces for home gardens uh, that it provides significant amount of nutrition? And I think we also need to see how we're going to promote these and, and scale these up. And this has been an interesting side uh, thing from our, our project that uh, we work with a number of NGOs, uh, including KGVK in the tribal areas of Jharkhand, and they took it upon themselves to try and promote these uh, seed packs. They produced uh, a, uh, a wall poster here that had 23 different vegetables on it. Now, they found that 5,000 of these were sold in the last year just to NGOs and to farmers themselves. They were willing to pay for this sort of packet because they could not get this seed available. It's very hard to go anywhere buy a whole packet of vegetables that are suitable for the farm. So working with large NGOs can be a very effective way of promoting these sort of vegetables. But we can see even a better opportunity in working with the private seed sector. Lal Tia Seeds in Bangladesh has been working with us in terms of promoting home gardens and uh, they have started using a small seed pack here with five different vegetables in it uh, and they're using it as a living advertisement. Now, they've been able to promote a whole lot of these, selling them around the countryside. Uh, they've reduced their TV advertising because the living advertisement is far more effective. They aim to sell 200,000. Instead, they sold 1.7 million. So there was a tremendous opportunity for promoting these sort of things to get out a message of home gardening. But is this as effective as a package with 20 different vegetables? It's a research question we don't know. Which are the most appropriate vegetables? Certainly, this is a very effective way of getting the message out. But I think it's not just a matter of vegetables, it's also the whole package. We've seen fencing as being critical. Uh, some of the cases we're using fences uh, derived from uh, fishing nets that work very well and very cheaply, could be combined with a package as well. Uh, water supplies is also critical. In many cases it's a matter of where the, the, the garden is located, has a big impact on the water supply, but there are also other appropriate uh, uses such as trickle irrigation that are being effectively used as well. But I think it's important that we see it as a part of an entire community program. <coughs> We're working at the moment with a program that my colleague Usha back there is uh, working on and through six countries, integrating vegetable gardens in schools as well as in homes, and to see what the multiplier effect of that is on the nutrition of the entire community. As you start to introduce new vegetables, new varieties, and new practices through the school, how can they improve vegetable production in the home? But we also see that there are some tremendous opportunities of working with the health sector. We've got a, a pilot we're going to be starting later this year, working with an NGO in India who provides a regular training program over six months for poor rural women, aiming at a whole range of interventions to do with sanitation, to do with various things to do with the, the family health. And a part of that intervention is, is home gardens, but they don't know how to do it. So by providing them with a package that fits nicely into their training program, we're starting to integrate more effectively home gardens as a health intervention, not just as, as an agricultural intervention. 
And we can start to see an opportunity for these uh, community health workers also to pay to make income by selling the home garden kits along with the medical supplies they're otherwise providing. So I think there are some tremendous opportunities for working with these groups. So we see combining these two things together, a very clear product as Coca-Cola has, a nice package like IKEA has, something that's targeted, selling seeds, seedlings, an entire package can be a very useful intervention for improving community health. Thank you. To learn more about scaling and how you can contribute to this growing body of knowledge, please visit agrilinks.org slash scaling.